Hey guys, it's Pastor Scott. I'm going to ask that you guys do the same thing that I ask you, of you. I'm going to do the same thing that you pray and hit the share button, pray and hit the share button. So I'm going to do that right now. Lord Jesus, bless this service that you will be magnified, Lord, and that you will draw the people that you want to come to your word and to be blessed by your Holy Spirit and the word of the Lord that's going to be preached today. So we thank you and we praise you. All righty, so I'm going to flip this camera around. It is go time. It is 2.31. Amen. I can't really see too much, so I uh, hope and pray that we're all right. That looks like Brett's in the camp and the shot. We'll go from there. My screen is almost darkly black. I mean, I can barely see the live because it's so bright out here. <laughs> Hallelujah. <clears throat> so give us just a few minutes to get started. I got my... Test, 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 test. Check, 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 check. All righty. And Joni, I can adjust the volume from there. All righty. Today we're actually going to open up to uh, Proverbs chapter 31 since it's Mother's Day. Yay. Amen. <laughs> so happy Mother's Day to all you mamas out there. Um, this was from the, the Version Bible app. I just thought it was a wonderful scripture. So Proverbs chapter 31. So Proverbs chapter 31, verse 31. I mean, we could read the whole thing from, I think, where does it start? Around verse 18 or something, right, Joni? Somewhere in there? 31.10? Uh, 31.10, I think, yep, it starts at verse 10. But we're just going to do one scripture here to open this service up, and I'll pray us in, and then we'll get to going. But uh, we love you. God bless all the mothers. I'm going to pray for you. Thank you for that, everything that you have done and will continue to do. And the ones that aren't here that we miss, um, God bless those hearts that miss them. So Proverbs chapter 31, verse 31 says this in the King James Version. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. Amen. Let's say that again. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you uh, that we get to have service in the backyard. Thank you also, Lord. Uh, for the neighbors being kind and uh, putting up with us while we're here. And uh, we pray that the park will be open. But today, we want to honor mothers with everything, with the service, uh, with our hearts, and, and with our mouths, as it says, let their works praise them in the gates. But we're going to pray. The word says that uh, we are to give honor where honor is due. And we honor our mothers, the ones that are here or the ones that are in heaven right now, Lord Jesus, that knew you and that trusted on you for salvation. Father, and comfort all those mothers right now that might not be with the ones that they love for whatever reason, and especially those that have sons that are incarcerated right now. Lord, what a, what a hard thing that is. I know um, how it felt on my side, but I cannot imagine what my mother went through as I was uh, locked up in prison for those years, Lord Jesus, and struggling. And we were just praying today and talking as a son and mother just about how awesome it is and what the Lord did uh, with me and my brother Brett yeah. and many sons around the world that have turned to Christ because of their mother's faithful prayers. And those moms that uh, uh, don't have sons that have turned to Christ that might be living a life of crime or not going the way that you uh, would have them or the way that you would think and pray that they should be going, don't lose heart. Keep praying. Uh, send your prayers up in the name of Jesus. And keep praying because one of these days those prayers are going to pierce through Amen. and they're going to make a difference. Amen. And those, those sons and daughters are going to change and start to glorify Christ with their life. Amen. And we thank you, Lord, for this day as we honor all moms all the way around the world. And we thank you, Joni, for your faithfulness. Amen. Mom, Joni, <laughs> kind of the mom of the ministry. <laughs> she holds things together with her faithfulness. God bless you all. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Jeff, I think you're not going to have to take this.
Social distancing, remember, keep your, keep your four feet because we're family. <laughs> Six feet, try to do your social distancing. Amen, amen to that, you guys. Roman, Romans 13, 1 and 2, in case you have a question. Happy Mother's Day text from my sister, and if you do the mirror image of mom, what is it? Wow. <laughs> Amen. I shared that a little bit before. Let I, me get you a little more. Came up here, but uh, God is really God good. And, uh, God bless you. Hallelujah. What's, what's amazing is that our month uh, theme is the glory of God revealed in his son. And that was given to us last November. And then we have National Day of Prayer. What was the theme? Glory, glory. to God. Yeah. We just added glory revealed in his son. Amen. I was like, it's such a blessing when you have confirmation that you're hearing from the Lord yep. and that you're not thinking, oh, well, somebody talked to me or something like that. But when you have that confirmation and that a lot of the other preachers and men and women of God are on the same path of giving glory to God. And, you know, he could have assigned it to us for a different month, yeah. but he assigned it in the month of May. The National Prayer Day, give glory to him. Amen? Yep. Right now, um, we have, uh, if you, when we go over the three Ps, I want you guys to read Psalms 10 because it's really, really heavy. It's about the battle and that. And uh, today we're going to sing about that battle because the battle belongs to the Lord. Amen. Amen. And, uh, Hallelujah. I was wondering, should I go with music on this or acapella? But the Lord is saying, I want to hear the praises of my people. Amen. I want to hear their voices shout the battle are. belongs to the Lord. And that glory and honor, power and strength to the Lord. And that the Lord is revealed in his son. Amen. Amen. That was... How's that volume on that? Way too loud. The weapon is
Hallelujah. We worship your holy name. You are worthy, O oh Lord. That's going to be a day when he comes shining on the clouds. You notice in the lyrics it says, flood the nations. We have brothers and sisters Amen. of Christ that are around this world that we're praying for. Amen. Not only because of the United States, but because of what is going on out and around us, Lord. Check, check. Lord, just thank you, Lord, that the, the praises of your people are going forth because I know that they're praying for us. We are all one body of Christ that loves Amen. one another. Otherwise, if we don't love one another, then our religion, our relationship is vain. Yeah. Amen. 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 So, in Micah 6, 8, the title of the song, He Has Shown Thee, and it also goes with uh, Psalms 10 about being justly, mercifully, and work uh, Amen. mercy and walking humbly with God. Amen. Amen. Show me.
has shown me. That's not easy, Body, man. mind, and soul. Yep. Attitude. Attitude, that's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord is looking for his undefiled flock. Even though uh, you know, we were born in sin, we have Jesus here purified by the blood of Jesus. Amen. 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 We're forgiven. Yeah. Today is a day of salvation. Today is a day of repentance. Today is a day to give glory to God. Yep. As you've seen in Easter and Passover and everything revealed in his son and the meanings that are behind that, God wants to give you a new life and a life more abundantly that you may yeah, not walk in darkness, but to walk in the Those light. Those bongos sound good Amen. on the recording. Oh, Amen. You can hear the bongos Amen. on the, the bongos recording. Awesome. You can hear them on the recording, too. The the, 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 yeah, it's just... <laughs> I'm going to have to use that for lessons. But anyway, let's get on to the vision. We have the vision, which is the Jesus, Jesus model. Oh. Jesus preached outside to the crowds and also spent time in study and prayer with close friends. Amen. Amen. Follow along. We have the, uh, the uh, plan on the uh, recording here. Yes, and then also to make mention... Uh, to you guys that are online, if you would like to get the plan so you can print it out or follow along, if you are technologically savvy, you can have it up on another uh, item. Just go to oneaccordcrusades.com and then click on the little drop down and go to the plan and it'll be uploaded. I was going to do it in uh, English and Spanish, but it was too much work to try and get them both on there to, on the website. It's not easy the way they have it designed, yeah. So forgive me, my well, Spanish brothers. So maybe the Spanish will be able to learn the English. And Amen. For us, we need to speak to the, learn the Spanish so that we can uh, have a conversation. Amen. So we have a mission. Our mission is to bring people where? In. in. What do we do with them? We train, train them, them up. up. And we send them out to bring others where? Back, back, back into the, the flock, the amen. Flock, that they would receive that gift of eternal life and salvation and know that they are guaranteed, as long as they walk the walk and talk the talk and don't turn to the right or left, but put Jesus first by the transformation of their lives to walk in mercy. And what was the song say? But to do justly and to love mercy, mercy and to walk humbly with thy God. Amen. amen. We'll be doing this with you sincerely, one of Court Crusades. We w we're committed to introduce you into a personal relationship with Jesus. Amen? Yeah. We're going to get into the second section of the, of the uh, plan, and we please participate in reading and speaking along. Uh, you speak it out there on Facebook and that, in your own private thing, it, it, um, quarters where you're at listening. It'll help you grow because speaking... What's the scripture uh, speaking out the word? Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life are in the power of the, the tongue. tongue. Those that love it, eat it shall eat its fruits right. there There's within or something like that. The word of God, something like that. When you speak the word of God, it'll manifest and the enemy can't stand it. Amen. It's speak life. Like, like the we're, yeah. life, we're, we're going to speak life with this scripture. Like the on. Jeremy Camp song. Yeah. Speak yeah. life. Amen. <clears throat> So in the morning, under number one, we seek God first and put on the full oh, armor oh of God. God, not just half of it. I mean, if you go outside half-dressed, uh, somebody might have a comment to tell you. Might pick up a case. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. saying, and not to be in a good place when you pick up that kind of yeah. case. So we just saying. The full armor of God, and we find that in the book of Ephesians, Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 6. six. And the verses are 10 through 18. 18. It also goes on a little bit more with some other in-depth uh, discussions in that. But I'll leave that. We, we're doing 10 through 18. Yep. So verse 10. Finally, my brother, and be strong, strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. You know, if, if uh, the battle belongs to the Lord, if he didn't have any of that equipment on him, being the son of God, 
how could he be able to do his battle? He yep. gave us his word. His word is in Ephesians 6 on how to do battle, how to cover yourself so that you do not become a victim of the enemy. Amen? Amen. Verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. You could say viruses, too. Yep. Against sure. powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual weaknesses, wickednesses in high places. Can anybody uh, grab a hold on and give a comment on verse 12? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's a lot of spiritual wickedness in high places today, and we can see it all over the, the news. We're, media. we're experiencing we, it right we now, can see huh? see it all over in the politics of the, the partisan politics of the United States. We can see it. All right, yep. It's been there all along, but right now it's being manifested. Yep. It, that anybody that doesn't see it better open up their eyes. Yep. Verse 13 wherefore, wherefore, take unto you. The whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. 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 Amen. And let your voices be heard out there. Let other people know how to stand on the word of God and what this whole fight's about. They might laugh at you. Well, they laughed at Jesus also. Yeah. And what happened? Jesus ascended into heaven after his death and resurrection and sitting at the right seat. Right In your father. face. Right. Devil Hello. and all the people want to laugh at Jesus. <laughs> I think there's a big L in the devil, yeah. so. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> so we're gonna go through verses 14 through 18. First of all, we're gonna put on our belt, our loins girded with the belt of truth. That belt of truth, what is truth? Where do you find the truth? Word of God. It's in the word of God. It's in right. get your sword out for me. Oh, it's right here. Oh, or Pastor Scott, you can Well, I got one here too, okay. but you take that up there. He need that up there anyway. <laughs> yeah. From Genesis to Revelation, it's the Word of God. It is the truth. Amen. King James Version. Amen. Amen. Then we go on to the breastplate of righteousness. Amen. Amen. Righteousness, how does he give us righteousness? When we come to Jesus, he gives us his righteousness by the blood of by his blood. Amen. That's then right. we have our feet shod with the gospel of peace. Peace. Not war. That's right. But of peace. And that's also found in the Bible from Genesis to Amen. Revelation. Amen. Then we have a shield of faith. Amen. Amen. Do, what do we do with that? What does that shield of faith do? It quenches all, it the, quenches fiery all the fiery darks. All that darkness, all that worldly stuff that wants to come at you and take you down with their opinions. Because with God, things are, with man, things are impossible. With God, all things are possible. Amen. Man's opinions will lead you to the depths of hell. Who Ooh, told just them, saying. If, they, if it wasn't of the Lord, who told them their ideas are right? You can even put that in the scientific field. In that, we just went through a whole part where the statistics of the scientific field were wrong. Yeah. Did the scientific field consult Christ? <laughs> just that? saying. Yeah, amen. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> so science we is have usually the wrong. Of salvation. Guaranteeing, as long as you walk with the Lord, and uh, you do that Micah six eight song, walk humbly to do justly, to have mercy on your fellow uh, brothers and sisters in Christ. Sometimes they're ignorant, yeah. but they're filled with their own opinion too, and that own opinion is going to lead them into depths of hell if they don't wake up. And you're the you're the people that have woken up are the only ones that can reach them. Amen. Or plant seed. It doesn't have. It can go gradual at a little bit of time. Yep. But we're all Here, little, there, because little. we know. We know the truth, and the truth has set us free. It set Pastor Scott free of his drug addictions, and that set yep. him free after he had to go do five years in the pen. Yep. And also with uh, Jeff. Set free. Because uh, God wants us to take hold on that. This is what he, he's serious when he when he repeats things. Yep. He wants us to grab hold on it and not it, let it go one ear and not the other. Then we have praying always in the spirit. Mm. Whatever language you have, your English, you have a prayer language, let it go and let, let it, it flood the, the heavenlies so that people can get blessed from it, that the, the, the Holy Spirit wants to pray for, that we don't know. We have, like, to flood the nations with grace and mercy. There's things out there that people need prayer for 
And then it'll come to pass and they'll go like, where'd that come from? Somebody answer my prayers because somebody on the other side of the earth prayed for you for it to come Amen. to pass. Amen. Prayers go far. Yep, they just they do. don't stop here at, 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 at your mouth. When you speak those words, they go into the heavenlies. Yep. The mercy seat, the seat of Christ, they hear you. Don't think that they don't. Because even with Pastor Scott's mom, the Lord heard her prayers Thank and God. brought her son back home. That is so awesome. Huge. You may not see it now, but in due time, so there's cool. always a season for everything to be manifested. Amen? And harvest is coming up in October, so keep on praying this whole summer for people out there. Then we have the three Ps with Psalms and Proverbs. First thing, in the morning we fill up with the three Ps. We pray, and then we read the books or verses of Psalms and Proverbs for the day's day. Today's Psalms was so awesome about the battle. Get on it. He tells us in his word what's going on, and today just happens to be, bam, right after the National Day of Prayer and what's going on. He inhabits the praises of his people, and he is acting upon those petitions. Amen? Amen. If today's day is the 10th, then that Psalms 10 today and yep. Proverbs 10. Even in Proverbs 10, it talks about fighting. I think in Psalms, uh, uh, Psalms 10, it was also talking about the fatherless. Yes. And yeah. about what happens to the wicked. Pray for the wicked. Maybe they'll wake up. Before beginning, read and pray and ask the Lord to reveal his word to you. Put your name in there to personalize it because it's a personal love letter just to you. Just to you, Brett. Yep. Just to Amen. You, just to you, Pastor Scott. And Jeff, Amen. And just to you out there. I don't know if Philip's out there, Pastor Bob. It's a personal message to you. Jay, Marla. It's a personal message Dan, to you, Marla. Dan, Rosary, Sai. Nene, Mama, Marilyn, hallelujah, Aunt Marilyn, all kinds of them. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Ooh, that just stirred up prayers for those people that Woo. are online. That the glory of God be manifested in their life. Hallelujah. As their light beacons out and shines to the others that are lost about them. And that they would ask, the people would ask them, where do you get your light from? And that you guys be bold enough to say it's from Jesus. Amen. That you Hallelujah. were signed, sealed, delivered, and redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Amen. We're going to go to the memory verse in the topic, the glory of God revealed in His Son. We find that in, we chose, uh, God chose Philippians 2.11 yep. in the King James Version. There's a little bit before that, but we, we did the, um, the latter half. Just to keep it simple for them. Exactly. And so son. let's say it all together. And, and every, every tongue, tongue should, should confess... confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father, of God the Father. Amen. Amen. I was trying to do that and say it. Let's try it again and see if I can multitask. I could always practice better multitasking. Yep, and it's fun. Okay, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Today's scriptures were so juicy. I kind of got stuck on just a few of them that, like, wow, well, Lord, you're really saying that? Wow. <laughs> that is so awesome. And that he gave me a personal love letter. We, Amen. Uh, number five. Repeat, on Mother's Day. <laughs> Amen. And repeat this daily and attend here at the pump at Pastor Scott's mom's house. <laughs> at the Trotsky house. Yep. Oh, Everyone oh, knows oh, where the Trotsky oh, house oh, is. Oh, yep. Oh, Yep. <laughs> Everyone knows where the Trotsky pad is. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> now it's a Holy Ghost party house. It's a righteous Holy Ghost. Righteous. So yep. Ain't no party like the Holy Ghost party, and the Holy Ghost party don't stop. <laughs> Ain't no party like the Holy Ghost party. The Holy Ghost party don't stop. <laughs> Pastor Anthony used to love that one. <laughs> Hopefully we'll get some calls in and we'll be able to pray with you and, 
and help you out to stand firm against Amen. the wiles of the devil. Amen? Amen. 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 Testimony okay. time. Testimony. Yes, hallelujah. Well, I'm going to start off real quick. All right, I got, I'm burning. Spe- speaking I got of one Mother's on the... Day, okay, <laughs> the, there's a, we have some cats at the house. Uh, yeah, you can. You can. Okay. Oh, right. we, we have some but cats at the house, and the cat had no, like five can't. kittens. You want it? Two of them passed away, and there's three gold ones left. Well, now I know who the daddy was because it's a gold uh, um, tabby. Yeah. So today, I see the mother cat in the front uh, on the concrete <clears throat> in the shade, and then the daddy cat is laying uh, in the grass with the three kitties on top of him. Ah! It was kind of like, Daddy Cat knew to give Mommy Cat a break. <laughs> I'm like, even the animals know that it's Mother's Day. And that's what's so awesome. But then my other crazy part is that I was able to get my husband, uh, his uh, order a guitar for him, a case, so that he, because the tuners on his uh, uh, guitar uh, were breaking, they, they stripped out. So he's learned not to let anybody use the guitar because there's a lot of people that come in, oh, let me just play your guitar and that. And then they get around dealing after you tuned it to tuning it up to what they did and that's what kind of broke it so this last guitar uh, Bert, stand a little closer at this home. so anyways yeah. glory to no God it's just making static uh, because he's having he's also having uh, uh, revival out on the yard with the other guys yeah. so i just pray for that rival to keep on continuing amen, amen. Hey everybody! Hey, Happy Mother's Day out there. Amen. Uh, yeah, we had a really, really good word uh, yesterday. That's for sure. But I just want to share a quick, just real quick. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna make it like I'm at an AA meeting and tell my whole story <laughs> about how I got so. But I, I did a lot of, I did a lot of very bad things when I was a teenager. Did a lot of drugs. I drank a lot. I did a lot of it right here at the bonfire pit that's right over here. You guys wow. can't see, but anyway. Yes, you did. Uh, and but I was able, I was able, drugs, you know, I was able to stop doing it, but I could never stop drinking on my own. Uh, it was a real bad problem, and it was going to kill me if I kept going the way that I did, um, and the way that I drank. But God delivered me from that on uh, on three twelve two thousand seven. So wow. that's yeah. thirteen years. Anyway, but we had a lot of friends that we party with. We had band members. We were in bands. Me and Scott were in bands. And, punk rock bands and stuff and we had members and when you when you go out on tour with those guys and you spend so much time with them and you play music with them become a brotherhood uh, i'm not exactly going to say like people's names or whatever but one of those brothers has been out on the streets doing heroin doing crystal meth smoking weed whatever probably whatever he could get his hands on but I, for some reason not drinking but he just he's a drug addict and he's been that stuck that way for years now and uh, almost 10 years yeah almost 10 years and yeah, so we we had been praying for him, been trying to get him. He had had brief moments of of clean time, and then he would mess up again, and then be stuck again. Well, we got a word that he decided to make a step toward getting sober, um, and that he would go up north to a Christian retreat up north. And he gave us he told us that he would do that, but then he he shot. This was months ago, and he shied away, and he didn't do it. Well. We got word on last week that he was driving up there and he was already in Fresno. And that he was halfway, he was like halfway to going up there. And just out of the blue, out of nowhere, he decided to go. Well, you know, it probably, God probably finally said, hey, you better go get your butt up there now because, you know, hey, I'm not going to let you do this for too long. Something's going to happen bad to you if you don't go. Yep. So he probably got that word because I know did, I know I did, and I know some of the others that are here did. Anyway... But we he hadn't disappeared. Heard, we hadn't heard word from him. He, he disappeared. disappeared. We didn't hear. We didn't hear where he was. You know, like we heard that in the middle of last week that he was going up there, and he just he just we didn't hear anything. We didn't and hear we, that we, he we, made and, it. We didn't hear that yep. he was hanging out somewhere else or what happened. We didn't hear anything. He didn't call us. We us we called we called we called the guy Bobby yeah. up north, and 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 Bobby said okay, he's in Fresno. Bobby says, okay, I'll make his room ready for him. Yeah. He right. made his room ready, turned right. the heater on because it's still cold up in the mountains. And he says, okay. And then we got a call in the evening, says, Mike never showed up. Yeah. yeah. We, so we, yeah, yeah. We, we were praying, praying, praying that he get up. I don't up know there, where he you know. was. 
He had no cell phone. He borrowed a phone. He borrowed a phone, right, Bert? Yeah, he borrowed, yeah. He borrowed a phone. To call us, to tell us he's in um, Fresno. So we didn't know where he was. He just disappeared for days. And then we we're like, okay, we don't know what happened. <laughs> okay, so yesterday um, was a great day. Uh, we made plans for the mothers for this whole weekend. And we got the best Mother's Day gift that we could have. We got word that he was up there at the Christian Retreat that he made it there. And he was just he was just in our our capital in Sacramento screwing around sightseeing and stuff for those days. So anyway, but he made it up there. So now we just need to keep praying that he stays up there and that he gets delivered from his addiction and then he ha he that he has testimony to share to everyone and that he he will help others that are stuck in their addiction be free from their addiction because he will have an amazing testimony if he just sticks with it and Amen. I believe he will. Amen. I think God's got him and I think that he's not going to let him go and I think he's going to stay clean this time Amen. and I just thank you for that word Lord that you gave us yesterday. Amen. What a what a gift and what a blessing. Probably the greatest Mother's Day gift we've ever had and, and uh, so I just think that's amazing. So we thank you Lord for that and uh, we love you. Amen. Amen. And I'm gonna I'm gonna add to that. Um, I'm getting a little teary. I just just thinking about it. Um, he was the the Holy Spirit must have really been working. He said he was, but then we didn't know what spirit it was. You know what I mean? He he's been so paranoid when we talk to him on the phone. You know how the drugs start to do. So and so's after me, going to take my life. I got you know the helicopters. He was starting to talk about the helicopters that were supposedly following him around for months and all that stuff. He said, "Just ride with me a little while, and I'll show you and I'll prove it to you that the the helicopter are after me." I mean, it was getting really bad. But but like Brett said, this story started a while ago, and and it me and Diana we left Montana last year to come back. Uh, Come back, come back here, and uh, our friend Pastor Sam Joni, he said, "Hey, would you stop by this this Christian retreat center? It's not there's nothing going on there except for it's bi being built, and it, it's a it's a big. There, I think there's 18 rooms up there. There's a, a kitchen, you know. There, there's the the chapel right next to the to the Kino room, <laughs> where they have Kino on the wall. So you got the bar and Kino, and then right next door is a small." thin uh, chapel everything is run down and broken to places they got it for pennies on the dollar a pastor from oakland california bobby's up there right now um he's been working on it. he's in charge of restoring the place wow. me and diana had to go through hell just to get to there we came into the property off of the five freeway and it says like 42 miles to get to the where the fork in the road was and we're like, oh cool siri said oh it's only going to take this much time but well, we started that drive in the afternoon, and we did not get to that retreat till the evening after almost hitting a couple cows and praying in the Holy Ghost. And Diana literally crying because she could not take any more curvy roads. And the roads not only were they curvy, they were curvy and is a newer part of 36 up there or wherever it is, 38, 36, 40, I don't even know. It's a newer part, and there are no guardrails yet built it's it's a newer road so there's no when you're going around and you're starting to feel sleepy and such and i mean you just drive right off into oblivion and for us since we're saved we go to heaven but it was it was murder to get there literally i mean it and it, it was rough but pastor said yeah from the five and pastor sam said oh just come on up here well we went up there well we just saw you pastor sam it was really much much reason for us to go up there just to see pastor sam who we just left in montana who we're going to see again anyway but we met Bobby. We got to spend a couple of days up there as husband and wife and just pray and enjoy the beautiful facility. Amen. And then we got back home. Um, that brother was still hanging around the house before we had to actually eventually let him go um, because of his behavior. And uh, we tried to make the plans before, like Brett said, um, to go up there. We already called Bobby and said, okay, he's ready to go. Yeah. And then one excuse after another excuse after another excuse. And this time, I... Brett told him, you need to get right. You need to do Amen. this. And then I told him, dude, don't let those excuses stop you this time. Just go. Yeah. And Amen. he did. But it was a crazy, like, it, if you know this person, and you'll eventually meet him because he'll be sharing his story on this camera sometime Amen. at the park Amen. in the name of Jesus. Um, Amen. But it's totally like him. They just call us from Fresno and then disappear for a couple days. It's so him. 
But he is the first person, according to Bobby, that found, because this place is so deep in the middle of nowhere in the mountains, you can't find it. I mean, we had to find it, and we almost didn't find it. Wow. Wow. And we had the connection with the phone. He was the first person to find that place without having to stop at the store Amen. and ask for help to get the directions. The Holy Spirit led him. Yep. I told him kind of how to get there. Like, generally, here's what you do. You get off the freeway here. Then there's a fork of the road. Literally, this is what I told him. And you go right at the fork of the road, and you go down into that city. Once you see the store, it's eight miles or so, seven to eight miles. There's a road. You turn right and then go back about a mile, and then the place is on the left-hand side. That's exactly what I told him. That's all I told him. I had to no this phone. city. Wow. It, up north. And I, I said, no it's phone. about ten hours. He had no phone. And he had no phone. He's the first person to find that place without having to stop and ask. That is amazing. He was there. Bobby had left to go to the store and run some errands. He came back, and there's this car sitting there and a dog running around. It's a person he doesn't even know. <laughs> <laughs> and then Bobby called me and says, hallelujah. Guess what? Yeah. I got this stranger sitting in front of me and his dog running around. I think you might know him. <laughs> and we just started praising Jesus and crying and jumping. And we were, I mean, I mean, the praises, I mean, I'm surprised the windows didn't come off the house and the, the top of the roof didn't come off because this is someone, like Brett said, is, is basically family. We spent 16 years on the road sleeping. He spent five or six years in this house. We picked him up off the street. I went down to go to the doctor five, six, seven years ago. I didn't have a car at that time. Mom had to drive me. I was just out of prison. I just got hired as the associate pastor evangelist for a church. I was on fire just like I am now. And we were driving past the old band studio and I heard these words, go get Mike. Oh. I've only heard audible, yeah. the audible voice of the Lord a few times. I heard it and I, I said, Mom, did you hear that? And she said, no. <laughs> right, Mom? <laughs> and, I, and I said, we got to go get Mike. Said, what, are what are you talking about? What are you talking about? I said, we got to go get Mike. She said, where do you go, Mike? Well, well, let's go by the studio first and see if he's still there. He wasn't there. He says, okay, now what? How are we going to find him? I said, well, Lord Jesus, guide us to Mike in the name of Jesus. Amen. And we went to a spot where we heard from a friend that he, you know, how the homeless have a corner that they stay at. <laughs> we went to the corner. We didn't find Mike initially. We found the car. Oh, that looks like his car. And then there was a dog bowl on top of the hood of the car. And I said, oh, that's the dog's bowl. <laughs> they must be around here, but he wasn't around here. And being familiar with the street, doing homeless ministry and living on the streets and being a drug addict myself, I just knew that's look for some homeless people and we'll find Mike. They'll know exactly where he is. They probably already knew that we were there. Yeah. And then we found a guy. He says, what did you know I'm Mike? You know, my name's Pastor Scott. I, I, my, I'm on here. We want to help him. Oh, he's right over there with the dog. Walk up. Hey, Mike. Gave him the opportunity to come home. And he didn't clean up, so we had to get rid of him. And then he tried to come back during this coronavirus, and we said, sorry, bro, you can't. You're putting our family in danger. you got to get out of here. Yeah. You know how bad that sucked? I mean, we, we got in a brawl, a family almost fist fight over this because some people in the family wanted to come in. Some of us said, nope. And, when it, I mean, it created a big rip. I mean, I showed up here in a couple Sundays a bit pissed off about the whole thing. Amen. And we got through it. We pushed through it. And then and my wife and Brett's wife, you know, that ain't, ain't happening. And the Lord used them to get him and to put that thumb over him so that he had to do something, and now he's up there. Amen. Sorry it took so long, but this Praise was God. this one was one right oh, to the heart. Right amazing. to the heart. He's at prayer. He's at that mountain right now. Amen. Bobby's a man of prayer, and it's him, Bobby, a couple of dogs, and the guy named Marcus. I can say their names, but I'm not going to say my name. Where's the city? It's, uh, I'm not saying because it's just, uh, but it's up north. It? It's in California. Oh, okay. Yeah, just up at the mountains about 10 hours from here. Amen? Wow. Amen. Hallelujah. What a great testimony. That, wow. that is so uh, refreshing to hear. I mean, that's, all you know, glory goes to God. All glory goes to God, and that strengthens our faith. That actually, when we get testimony, what that does is it, it unifies the body. It brings us closer yep. together because God's doing another miracle. Yep. His hand, listen, he's ha he has miracles to hand out left and right. All we have to do is ask. <laughs> yep. Not because you asked on yep. Jesus said. So I'm going to get into this word. So today I had a study. Happy Mother's Day. I had a study <laughs> session this week like no other. <laughs> I had the big Bible. It's um, right over there. And it's right over there in my bag with my other Bibles and, and, and other work. Joni's going to try and get it back from him today, but yeah, good Joni's luck with that. Try to get it back. 
because she said I can come to you at what grace you have. Thank you, sister. I will use it. We're going to beat down the kingdom of darkness with that thing. That's, a, that's our you goal told them. here. Did you tell them? Uh, so, I, I let them know. Thank you. That, that's a beautiful testimony. Praise God. All glory to God for that. That's, that's really cool. And today's message, Happy Mother's Day. The message, I entitled it, The Power of Words and the Word. Amen. I love that. And it really is, because if you look, uh, and we will be looking at quite a few different scriptures. <laughs> I'm going to give you a little bit of history on the Philippian church. Uh, Paul, uh, uh, Paul wrote the letter to the Philippians from prison. Yep. And, uh, you know, this is stuff that Scott taught us last week. But it's uh, good to review. And we're review. Uh, so I review a little bit of stuff. Um, and, and the mission, Paul's mission uh, was to encourage. This is really a letter of encouragement to the church of Philippians. Uh, I, they were one of his most beloved churches uh, that he wrote to. He didn't do a lot of correction with them. He just offered them uh, sound. Well, the Holy Ghost wrote to them and offered sound wisdom to them the whole time. So when he's admonishing the church to be like Christ and to be of one accord in this uh, in this very chapter. And so we're going to go Just saying. Uh, into this chapter and we're going to take a look at what and why uh, Paul wrote the things he did to the church at Philippi. All righty. So for those uh, that are online, uh, where are we going, brother? Chapter 2. Chapter of two. which book? Of, of, of Philippians. Philippians chapter 2. All right. So I'm going to rip through it and it, I'm going <clears> to <throat> give you a brief verse by verse hopefully it'll be pretty good and uh i have a lot of the scriptures memorized that go with this it was amazing i started reading it and the scripture would just come to me that, amen and it's going to come to me and this is how the holy spirit works he speaks things that he wants to speak and regardless of my getting the way a little bit or not philippians chapter 2 general electric power company yeah philippians chapter 2 it's, it's our memory Matthew, verse Mark, Luke, John. And if you don't know where it is in a Bible, just turn to the front, go to the contents, and then turn to the page. Or if you know generally, we like it's, to say Philippians, uh, what is it? General Electric Power Company. Yeah, and that's right after First and Second, second Corinthians. Corinthians. Yep. And then you have Galatians, yeah. Ephesians. Matthew, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, yeah. Acts and Letters that's to the Romans, First and Second Corinthians, Galatians, and Ephesians. Good singing. <laughs> I learned that in <laughs> Sunday school at his place. <laughs> so Paul, Paul in Philippians chapter 2, while you guys are getting there... When he wrote this letter, he was in prison. Uh, when he wrote these four letters, actually, the, a, a letter to the church in Ephesus, a letter to the church at Philippi, the letter to the church at Coloss, the, Colossae, and and the letter to the, um, yeah. Philippines. Philippians. Philippians letter. Is. So I'm going to read, I'm do, we're going to just go through the chapter because I want to go through the chapter to show you where Paul's at in the thinking. Okay, and now the first verse in chapter 2 kind of refers back to chapter 1 because he starts it out with if. <laughs> yep. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, which he showed you in the previous chapter. you got to read the book. You can read this whole book in about a half an hour taking your time. If there be, if there if there be, therefore, any consolation, I, I, I want to stop right there at that word, consolation in Christ. Uh, because Christ is the one that consoles us. Amen. He is the God of all comfort. Okay? If, if any comfort of love, love is truly comforting. You go back uh, to Corinthians, love is patient, love is kind. It's not envious, it's not boastful, it doesn't seek its own, it's not puffed up, it believes all things, hopes all things. Uh, so you can see the attributes of love. So love, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship, that word in the Greek, I know it, it's koinonia. Yep. If any fellowship, and that's what we, when you have Christ, you automatically want to fellowship with other, other, other believers. And, and, and the devil tries to get us divided so that we don't do that. And so we just talk at someone instead of talking with them. Yep. If any fellowship of the Spirit, that word Spirit is capitalized. That means Holy Spirit right Amen. there. Amen. If any bowels and if any bowels and mercies. Okay, now, so the word bowels. That's where it is thought that our deepest emotions are. That, that's the very depth of our emotion, Amen. emotional feeling. It, it's depth, <laughs> like you have a gut feeling. That's what it's talking about right there. That's what that word comes from, right? like the gut feeling. Yep. That's, what, that's what we're talking about right here. If any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy. So Paul is saying, fulfill my joy. 
that that you may be like-minded. Okay, and that's where like-minded means the, uh, exactly the same thinking is what it means in the Greek. Having the same love, being of one accord. accord. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> I think the shoes, the, the, okay, and I know Scott got the name for this ministry out of the Bible using the book of Acts. Yep. One accord. They were all on one accord. They were yep. all on one accord in the upper room praying in the spirit in the Holy Ghost. Amen. And speaking in tongues. And I'm going gonna, gonna to pause you right there. You're on a roll and you're doing great. Thank you so much. Now you're teaching us the Bible. Give Jeff a hand. If it, if it takes you about five to ten, seven minutes to get through the first verse or two, now you're starting to learn how to teach the Bible. So, that is so cool. But I'm going to say right here with the one accord, the Lord had given me a, kind of a vision and a direction for the ministry because there's so much um, disunity in the body of Christ. And as an evangelist, I have to work with all different types of denominations. We're one body in Christ. There is no division in the Amen. body of Christ. Amen. Catholics, Christians, Amen. evangelicals, Calvary, all that stuff. You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't really give a rip what you think you know. It's Christ and Christ crucified. Amen. Everybody is a heretic at some point or the other. I'm just being real. But the Lord had really spoke to my heart, so we need to bring the body of Christ together. And we need to work together for the betterment of the world so that people can get saved and go to heaven. Amen. So that was kind of the preface behind That's the whole me ministry. It makes me really well up because, you know, I see the hatred in the body of Christ. I see the people, the divisive. Just bickering. And bickering. And, yep. and, and, and love has nothing to do with that. That, that. They don't have, if you have to get into an emotional reaction that's coming from the flesh to think that you need to admonish a brother like this. With a mean voice, like an outside voice, the mean voice, like a err. Yep. That's why no. you text. <laughs> be kind, be kind, tenderhearted, loving one another, yep. uh, esteeming one, each other better. And it says that in the very next verse. Yep. So, uh, so that was a I nice read, segue. Yeah, so. So on that, okay. of one mind. So exactly. Let not, and this is, I'm going to refer back to this when I go a couple verses ahead. Of one mind, let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. Jesus Amen. also said, Jesus said, let your yes be yes and, and your, your no be, be no. Nay. Anything more is from the, the enemy, yep. from the adversary. So that's why, I, that's why now I say no, and then oh, why, whoop, 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 and, I, and I just say no again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting hit with the Holy Ghost all over this Let nothing message. be done through strife or vain glory. And, and, and strife is like, oh, I gotta do that. I gotta, I gotta. No, you just need to rest in the Lord. Amen. And trust in Him, and He'll speak to you like He did to me. That's why I'm even up here. You got it, Mama. I've been here for two years doing this because He said, like Scott, when Scott said, you know, the uh, Lord gave him a word. Well, the Lord gave me a word. He said, come <laughs> alongside this ministry, and that was the exact prayer they've been praying for weeks. And so I did. And so I'm here. You can thank Joni for that one. And you know what? <laughs> This has saved my life. I have to honestly say that I, would, I, I never knew fulfillment. I never knew what fulfillment was until I stepped out and started serving God. I didn't know what I was doing. Amen. Scott said, you're going to be preaching. I'm like, oh, Lord, I, I, don't want it. I didn't want to preach. I, didn't, I wanted to be like the guy on the side that helped the preacher, maybe polish his shoes, uh, <laughs> make him look nice, uh, you know, pray for him. And I'm yeah. going to be the guy that, but now I'm up here on the pulpit. So I'm doing the best I can. I trust in the humbly, Holy Ghost. Amen. Humbly, humbly. I trust humbly, in him yep. for everything. And Amen. I want you guys to know that he is worthy of me. Amen. <laughs> Let nothing, let nothing be done through vain, strife or vainglory, but... In lowliness of mind, okay, not to think too highly of yourself. Amen. That's what that means. Let each esteem other better than themselves. And so that's what I do. I esteem even uh, Steve or even any people that um, maybe don't, don't have the same gifts or skill sets as I do. I still, I, I look for the good in them. That's what this is saying. Look for, because God sees, Amen. God sees our, he created each of us with talents and gifts and abilities that some of us don't even know we have. So it's important to find out what your gift is and flow in that. Amen. And he will reveal it to you. And maybe through another brother. And one of my gifts is identifying gifts in other brothers and sisters. Amen. It's one of my gifts. I now I know it now <laughs> because he's given it to me. Amen. And I'm just able to uh, uh, discern that. And be, it's a gift. But in lowliness of mind, is let each esteem other better than themselves. I know I'm getting to our memory verse. Amen. Look not... Ev look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Wow. So that's like saying, 
you know, don't just look at your own Lexus and go polish that up. I'll help the brother fix his Pinto over here, maybe. <laughs> just, right, just an yeah. example. <laughs> just an example of, of something you can do. Or, or you know, oh, look, oh, my pantry's full of food and, you know, some of it's going to go bad. Well, hey, go, go give it to the homeless. Feed the homeless. Amen. Do something good with that stuff and get a reward for it even. Look, not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this, okay, now this is one of the most important verses here. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And I'm going to tell you, one of the best ways that you can let the mind of Christ be in you is to read his word and be a doer of it. Yep. Amen. Yep. Read his word and be a doer of it. Not just if, a hearer only. Not just a hearer only, like James says, but be doers of the word. Because faith Amen. without works is dead. Faith does work. Faith produces works. That's yep. what it does. Yep. Uh, in James it says, uh, what profit is a man if he say he has faith and have not works? Can faith save him? Well, a said faith can't save you. I, anybody could say anything. I mean, there's certain political uh, leaders, so-called leaders in this country that say they're Christians, you know? Yep. And they need to go to jail, probably. Yep. <laughs> but anyway, that's just, just a same. little aside. Um, it, uh, there's a lot going on in this world. The devil knows the time is short. Yep. So he's going to send the beast with great wrath. But, you know, greater is he who is in uh, us than he who is in the world. So this mind, for this mind to be, it says let. So this is a decision that we need to make. When the Bible says let this mind or let your yes be, that means when it says let, that means there is a decision for you to make. You can make this decision Amen. to pick up this word, start getting into it, reading it, letting it wash you. Because but, it washes yeah, and that word let also has a kind of a feeling of a progressive nature as you yes. were preaching it. Like the word if is more of a question. Yes. Let is... Is almost a progressive. It's it, as it's happening, yes. as, like uh, something is driving through and passing through, and yeah. you kind of let the car go by. It means allow to. Yeah, 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 yeah advance. Yeah, allow. That's you know what, what I mean? mean? Instead of if. Yeah, that. Whoa! Thank you for bringing that out. Let. That's huge. We got every word matters. It does. So th that's why I'm going on this. I mean, I've heard this probably preached on 20 different sermons from Cal uh, different. Calvary Ch Chapel ministers, because I listen to K-Wave a lot. Sure, it's awesome. Uh, and My it's wife all, loves I it. Lo I love the Calvary Chapel uh, word preachers. Yep, preach expository word. preachers. It's, it's all, I've learned so much that way. Who, Amen. who Christ, Jesus, this mind, let it be in you, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Well, you said even before Abraham was, I am, to the Pharisees. Yep. And the Pharisees understood that that ego amy, which Jesus said, meant the I am that God initially revealed himself to Moses with. The, the I am, the great I am. And so the Pharisees took up stones to stone Jesus after that. But let this mind be in you, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Is that saying that we're equal with God? Well, we're co-inheritors with Christ in all things, it says. <laughs> the Bible says we're seated in the heavenlies with him. That we have been given all things that pertain to life and godliness. This scripture is just coming to me, so bear with me. But made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. Amen. And uh, that, uh, a reference there to Psalm 22, 6, which you can uh, jot down. You might have that in your Bible as well, too. That's the uh, uh, the uh, sermon. The, uh, Psalm. Suffering servant. Yeah, the suffering servant psalm. Suffering servant psalm. Say that yep. three, say, three times. Yeah, suffering servant psalm. Suffering servant psalm. <laughs> that one's about Jesus <laughs> yeah, on the cross. It's about psalm the twenty-two. Of Jesus and the suffering of Jesus. Yeah, amen. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Which is why we preach Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Amen. For all, all of, of the world's sins. Not only our sins only. Some people say the atonement's limited, but I don't believe that. I believe that His uh, death is sufficient for all. So, Amen. Because it says that He died for not only for our sins, talking to Christians, the church, but for the sins of the whole world. Hey, and I'm glad you hit on that too. We just learned about that in class. In an effort to bring reconciliation to the body of Christ, there are some that believe that atonement is limited to just the elect. Yeah. And they use a specific verse to back that up. Yeah. But then others, you know, read, you know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So what the professor had brought to the table was that in regards to that, Jeff, yes. that, that, that position, we can hold a both and position on that word is yeah. a both and, not a either or. 
not it's their way or our way. It's yeah. a both end because there is an elect that was sealed. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. That he made sure that a representative from every nation would be at the wedding supper of the Lamb. Amen. But Amen. God did, and I'm getting hit with the Holy Ghost He's preaching this right now, yeah. but he did die for the entire world for those that would choose. And the oh, ones that he foreknew in advance yes. would make the decision for him. He sealed that decision. Yes. Amen. Amen. So that was kind of uh, just a little tidbit from class, Joni, and everybody here. Yes. Amen. So, so I, I have And I got the book. I emailed it to you. You have the 350-page okay. whatever okay. book on PDF for free. Thank you Amen. so much. I appreciate that. If you that. want to co copy, Tony, let me know. I'll I will send you one. spend my time in that. <clears throat> Amen. Uh, as I do in all my studies. But made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant. So this is the mind that's supposed to be in us. A servant mentality. We can see it here. And was made in the likeness of men. And being, fa and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death. Why does it say he be became obedient? Because I'll tell you why. It says uh, in Hebrews that he learned obedience through the things he suffered. suffered. Yep. And so, I don't know a specific verse. I don't have it. It just came to me. But it is in there. Every, everything you're going to be hearing is from Scripture. i got a lot of Scripture in me, man. Um, and, and so, this is the mindset that we're uh, supposed to have. Uh, and, and we are supposed to crucify ourselves. Uh, the Bible says that those are, that are Christ have crucified themselves with the lust and its affections. And the Bible says, reckon ye yourselves indeed dead unto sin and alive unto God. It says that Jesus said, pick up, your, uh, pick up your cross and follow me. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, pick up his cross and follow me. So, and, and that's serious. I mean, and, and so this is my cross. My cross to bear is that I serve the Lord and I preach his word and I lead others to salvation and train them up. Uh, as I'm being trained up here, which is awesome. It's Amen. just a beautiful thing. And we have no ego or pride here. We can uh, tag team. I can shut <laughs> up for a minute and let Scott say something. And, Joni and, 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 and Joni and whoever has input because that's what we're doing. We're being obedient to this scripture right here. And I mean, not, I've never seen this happen in any church. <laughs> But it happens here. Amen. Because we are obedient and we esteem each other as better than, and, and it's amazing. It's really amazing. It's easy to do for me to esteem Scott better than myself because he goes on missions all over the world. And I'm like, I, <laughs> I want to go too. Amen. But I get to stay here and, and, and keep this part of the ministry going and Amen. help out with this. And so someday an we'll raise, the Lord will raise up another leader and, and then the you'll Lord go with us. The Lord is raising up other leaders and Amen. they're about to get out of prison. Amen. 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 Speak it in the name of Jesus. <laughs> 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 Woo! <laughs> it's happening. Amen. And so, and being, so he humbled himself to the death of the cross, and that's what we're to do. Pick up our crosses. Wherefore, at, wherefore means therefore. Verse 9, wherefore. Okay. Wherefore yeah. is referring to all the stuff that you just read. Because of this, that's what wherefore basically means. Because of this, God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Amen. Hallelujah. There is no name greater than Yahweh, Yehovah, in, in the Hebrew. And, and, and for Yehovah to give him a name that is above every name is really saying something. That Amen. is saying that in the name of Jesus, you are saved. Amen. You are saved because you believe on Jesus. Paul told the Philippian jailer in uh, Acts. He was in jail in Philippi. Yep. Writing this letter uh, <laughs> and, the, and praising God in the middle of the night in the book of Acts in chapters. Uh, 16 and then they had a big earthquake yep. 16 you know, verse you 26 know yep. if you don't know the story read, read Acts 16. 16 yep it's in there and so and what and amazing things happened as a result of that the jailer got saved and didn't so household he was about to kill himself with the sword so yep. Paul Paul in, did an intervention on him hey wait a minute don't kill yourself We're yeah. here. <laughs> yeah and he probably could have easily wanted to just let him die oh, he's yeah, a he jailer guy yeah. you know how inmates and jailers get along <laughs> But Paul wanted that. Nope. Paul, Paul saw that, hey, Jesus died for this guy too, so yep. let's preach to him. Let's do it. And so he did. And so the guy didn't have to kill himself. What a great, what a great uh, a testimony there. Right out of the, right out the time he wrote this. So Amen. It's amazing. Uh, verse ten. So I'm at verse ten. Amen. That God, God gave him this name above every name. That at the name of Jesus, Yeshua, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth, and things under the earth. Uh, I can't, can't really explain the things under the earth, because I haven't been there, but Jesus was there yep. in Abraham's bosom in paradise. 
And you know the story there, too. And if you don't, please read. That's why you need to read the read Bible, the Bible. For yourself. Yep. Yep. You need to study it for yourself and ask the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you into all truth. Because Jesus said he would. Amen. Amen. You don't need that I teach you. But even though I am, you don't need that I do. You need that the Holy Spirit does. And yep. the Holy Spirit teaches you. And he's Amen. been teaching me big time and rebuking me and reproving me and... I cry and weep and snot comes out of my nose because I'm crying so much. <laughs> he reveals stuff to me and I get convicted and I repent of that thing. Amen. That's the process called sanctification. It's Amen. a little painful, but it's worth the pain. Yep. Uh, so at the name of Jesus, every, everything should bow, uh, things in, in heaven. So that's talking about the air and, and there's the, the third heavens that, uh, that are way beyond. Uh, there's different dimensions. I know this. There, God created all these dimensions and all the string theory and M theory. Those guys are like two plus two to God. The God's like that is just, that's, you know, nothing. I mean, God is so smart. He knows all things. Amen. So, the and, okay, and that every, this is our memory verse, and yep. every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. You know what's really cool about this verse? It's the exact same in the, King, in the New King James. It doesn't change it. Doesn't one change bit. it. I, that's doesn't, awesome. It doesn't change it. If there was a wherefore, it would. It would in the King James. They would have switched it. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but that's all. So. What is it there for? That's what we ask. So wherefore, because because of this verse, so twelve, wherefore, in light of the fact that Jesus, every knee is going to bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of the Father. That word Lord there in Greek, that word is kurios. Or kurios. Kurios, it's yes. Okay, so it's the K. Yep. So it has the kur. So the to the glory of the Father. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. <whistles> Why does it say that? Because it does not say work <clears throat> for your salvation. There's no such thing. There's no works that we could do to get it. It's a free gift. Which will have the opportunity to receive that gift today. Amen. Uh, when Scott comes up here and gives the altar call, which will be a beautiful thing. And Thank I, you, Jesus. I, I, I think that people will get saved today. I, I know that the Holy Spirit is working through His Word. Thank you, Jesus. To convict. Thank you. And to reprove hearts and to bring them to Him, the source of real love and real light and life, and all the real things that we get, the eternal blessings that we get in Him. Amen. Which we have right now. We're, we're seated in the heavenlies with Christ. So we are already, He already sees us up there as, because He knows the future, past, present. He knows it all. So He sees us as seated with Him. And that's why it says that, because He knows that we're, we have that authority in Him. So we have authority. And I want to go into the authority a little bit right here, too, because. To obey is better than sacrifice. We know the word says that. And, and to hearken, which means listen or, or obey, to. To hearken is better than the fat of, of lambs. So, and that was a burnt, and a burnt offering. And I know fat smells really good on the barbecue when it's burning. So, for it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So it's God, when we yield ourselves to God, when we're obedient to him, he gets to work through us as he pleases. And, and, and when I said, yeah, here I am, like Isaiah, I, I went to hear a message on the, the person of the Holy Ghost by Pastor Ed Carlson, one of, my, one of my mentors. And I went to hear this message by Ed Carlson. And when he was done with the message, we were singing a couple praise songs. I had my hands raised in praise. And God said, come alongside one of court ministries. And, I, and there's Scott over there. Early. And I went over and told Scott, and Scott, I jumped three feet off the ground and was started praising God even more that day. Which I, I want to go into, this is very important because I'm weaving my testimony into here to show you not only that God is sovereign, he works according to his own will, and he works in us, both the will and do of us good pleasure. And that's what he was doing there with me. And then we have instruction after this. Do all things without murmuring and disputing. And I appreciate the fact that when we started this 40-day fast, God, uh, God told me through, through Scott, Pastor Scott, no murmuring, no complaining. <laughs> it was like Scott, that was from the Lord. It was like Scott was uh, writing his own little epistle to us. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and I appreciate that. That was well. the instructions from the Lord. Because that was important because I tend to murmur and get a little hangry when I'm fasting. Yep. Uh, and uh, I have to keep that in check. Yep. 
that, why, why are we going to do this? That ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. Woo! Okay. That's right now. Stop right there for a second. Uh, and the, the next verse does say, holding forth the word of life. And that's what we're doing right now today. And that's what we want you guys to do too. We want you to uplift each other and, and not murmur and complain, but be harmless and blameless. Now that's a huge thing to be blameless because there's been a lot of people that have blamed me for a lot of things in my life. And a lot of them have been right to blame me <laughs> because I was to blame. Just God, saying. But God forgave me. I'm forgiven. I received that forgiveness. And now I pray that they, the people that blame me, will uh, lift their resentments to the Lord and receive His forgiveness for that. Uh, because to resent somebody is just, you know, it's 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 a poison that, that affects. It's it, it's one of the worst things. Is unforgiveness, and Jesus deals with that at, at the in Matthew and the Lord's Prayer. Well, it's not actually the Lord's Prayer. It's called the Model Prayer, and the verses following that deal with forgiveness. Yeah, yeah. So that's very important. But I want to go into why the power of words and the word is so important. Because words, like Scott said earlier, we see in Proverbs 18, 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. thereof. Whether you speak death, whether you speak life, you're only speaking one or the other. There's no in-between. That's uh -huh. what the Bible says not to be lukewarm. He'd rather have you be hot or cold. Cold and callous or hot and on fire. And I choose to be hot and on Amen. fire. Amen. Me too, the brother. The Lord is an all consuming fire, and we want to, we want to get with him. He, he, he's going to consume all the evil that's around us one day. Um, and it's going to be awesome if you have him, and it's going to be not so awesome. It's going to be a fearful day if you don't. Yep. So I want to go to John 114 now because this verse cross references this entire chapter. Yeah, you got it in there, Joni. Yeah. Yeah, I got John 114 in there. And that was originally going to be our memory verse. Yep, but it was a bit too lengthy. It was a bit too lengthy, and we had uh, Scott had mercy on us. <laughs> the Lord had mercy on us. Yes, the Lord, yep. John what? chapter 1. St. John. St. John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. The Gospel of John. I'm almost there. No, that's okay. Like I said, I'm trying not to tab up if I'm preaching so I can turn at, at try and arrive at the same time as other people. That's what I'm doing too. So just, you said that. Just follow on your example. So I don't know if it was a good idea or a bad idea, but I thought the timing idea. might timing might be working and give us more experience on how to turn to the Bible, please. Just, right? So and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen. That is that, such a beautiful uh, verse because we know that Jesus was there with God in the creation in the beginning in chapter 1, which is a great verse. I, I know it in Greek and English, so I can translate that and wit witness Jehovah's Witnesses with that that say that think that their uh, the, the uh, <laughs> indefinite article wasn't before the word God. But I know for a fact that then they translated 17 other places differently. So they're hypocritical in their translation or they didn't know the original Greek, which they didn't know the original Greek because it was anonymously translated. Why do they say that? Because they didn't want the person to get in trouble that's messed up so badly yep. on the Greek translation. Yep. Exactly why. by man, not by God. Yeah, exactly. Amen. And I'll mind you, uh, Minister Jeff, one day to be Pastor Jeff, <laughs> as the Lord leads Pastor Brian made us rem re uh, remember verse 14 all the way down to 18. Amen. Praise we God. had to say it verbatim. Well, I'll get on that, brother. <laughs> Amen. And should Amen. you ever go for your doctorate in theology, you'll have to memorize and uh, an entire uh, chapter. Okay. I believe I could do that. Amen. I know you can. Amen. I don't know about Amen. me, but... I believe you could do it, too. <laughs> Amen. I'll add my faith to yours. <laughs> we'll work, pray, we'll for, pray for each other. Amen. So the Greek word is... I'm, is this important to see that we see Jesus as the word? Jesus is the Lord. We're talking about every knee bowing to him. And this is going to happen someday. All the people that are so prideful and have their hubris up in the administration, whatever position they have in yep. politics and, and ruling, the rulers of this world are affected by the rulers of darkness of this world because the rulers of darkness work through people. 
and I've seen it, and I've been one that he's worked through. And yep. Praise God, he has his hands off of me now. But the Greek word here, kurios, the early church who used the LXX or the, the Pentateuch uh, understood that consistently this word kurios was translated, uh, the, the tetragrammaton, the Yahweh, was translated as kurios in the Pentateuch. So the early church understood this word Lord, and, and they knew that Jesus is Lord, and, 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 and the verse before it saying that he gave him a name above every name adds to the uh, clarity of what Paul's getting getting across, who Jesus is. He's Lord oh, so now of all. We're, we're back in Philippians? or So yeah, we're back in okay. Philippians now. Okay, because I, we I was still yeah, stuck we, in I John. I went there to, to get that verse, okay, because cool. that verse correlates with this entire passage. Amen. Amen. And especially our memory verse, and it was going to be our, our memory verse. Amen. And so... Thank you for nabbing that for Joni. You're, you're welcome. Uh, the, Lord gave, the Lord gave that to me. So yeah, God the Father... Uh, verse 9, we see God the Father has given Jesus a name above every name, and I just explained that. And so, I'd like us to go to 1 John chapter 4, verse 15. All right. I'll, I'll turn First and 2nd and 3rd John, Jude and Revelation. Yeah. 1st and 2nd and 3rd John, it's almost towards the end of the Bible. Oh, amen. It's after Peter. 1st and 2nd and 3rd John, Jude and Revelation. First John what? First John chapter four, verse fifteen. And there's a bunch of verses. I have about hundreds, but I, I got it down to about seven or eight here that I can preach on. Amen. So it says here in First John. I love First John. It's one of my favorite books. Every time I go to the DMV, it's the book I read. <laughs> uh, but I haven't gone to the DMV for a while. But I need to go back. Um, Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. Amen. Amen. So that we're seeing... And where was that? I, did, I missed it. The wind was blowing me away. 1 John, 1 John, 1 John chapter 4, verse 15. Verse 15. My bad. Okay, cool. 415. Like Four, the 405 yep. freeway, but yep, 415. All right, 415. Okay. Yeah. Who, whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God... God dwells in him and he in God. Amen. And that really, that verse really, you know, it just goes along, uh, you know, with uh, what eternal life is. To know the Lord and to know God the Father. To know Jesus and, and the Father is eternal life. John 17, 3 says that. Uh, you can turn there if you want to, too. I'll turn, we'll flip back and forth a little bit here between John and, and we're going to be in Revelation, too, which is the last book. That's easy to find. And, and I'm going to end with Matthew 10, 32, which okay. some of you may not. So these are the cross references here. I wanted to get to these earlier, but I just exposited it instead. Uh, John, ch John chapter what? So, Matthew. Matthew, we're going to end. Yeah, soon. Oh, no, it was just John 17, 3, the Lord's Prayer. That is actually oh, the Lord's 17. Prayer, John 17. Is actually the Lord's Prayer, where Jesus John prays 17, the Father yep. for all of us and all of you who will come to him today. John 17. Verse 3, yeah. All right. And this is life eternal. Jesus says this. That they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Okay. That's a good verse. That's, that's eternal life that we will know. So that's we're having a relationship with him and the Father. We talk to him like we've talked, well, we've talked to him with reverence, too, because we know who he is. But we talk, a lot of times I talk to him in tears when I get sad or emotional. Man, I take it right to God. I'm like, Father, help me in this. Jesus, touch me. Give me the right mindset. Give me the right attitude. Give me the right response. Because oftentimes, uh, we'll respond out of our flesh, and it can be sinful. But if we pray first, pray about everything, that's, that's my point here is to pray about the words that are going to come out of your mouth. Amen. Uh, there, there's a, in the 12-step programs, which all 12 steps come from the Bible and are just spiritually principles regurgitated out of the Bible. Uh, a lot of them coming from James and Corinthians. Yep, and, yep. And the, the parable on the, on, or the, the uh, parable on the mount. Sermon on the mount. There say. you go. <laughs> parable on the mount. Is yeah, sermon. it is. Yep. It, oh, it's a sermon. Okay, so... Uh, got Romans 
1411 as well to go to right now. So let's go to Romans, see what kind of cross-reference we can get. get out of. There's a lot of other cross-references. I'm sure some are coming to mind. If you, Holy, you have the Holy Spirit, he speaks to you. He does this all. Every time Scott preaches, verses are coming to mind that I just read the other day, or <laughs> last week, or a Amen. Week ago. Verses come to mind when Scott's preaching or when anybody's preaching, and I'm listening to a message. Verses come to mind Start back popping in. Yep. all the time. Yep. It, 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 it yep. happens all the time with me. Because I hear the voice of the Lord. It, it's a beautiful voice. Amen. And I always want to hear his voice. Because I'm a sheep, one of the sheep. Amen. So Romans 14, 11. That's a beaut too. For it is written. For it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. Wow. And then it says, so then every one of us shall give account to himself of himself to God. Amen. And that's on the day of judgment. Now, if you're a Christian, you're going to go to what's called the Bema seat, the mercy seat, and we're going to be judged according to our works. Whether they be wood, hay, or stubble, or whether they stand on the foundation that Christ has given us. So we may be losing rewards uh, or gaining rewards. When we go to the judgment seat, I pray that we all gain rewards and not lose any. Amen. But there will be tears, and God shall wipe away every tears because the rewards are going to be huge that we lost, or some people will lose. I don't want to lose any. And I don't want anybody of you to lose any. That's why we're encouraging you. That's why we get into the Word daily. That's why we have this plan. I mean, not too many churches have a solid biblical uh, reading plan that they give you. But we do. And that really is that's an awesome thing. And that has saved me from a lot of strife and uh, a lot of bad decisions. Amen. <laughs> Being reading the Word first thing in the day, Pro Proverbs and Psalms. Amen. Uh, so that says what this verse says, our memory verse, basically, uh, and that we're going to give an account. And then we have Revelation chapter 3, verse 5, another really great reference. That one's an easier one to find because yeah. it's at the end. I skipped to the end the first time I read the Bible. <laughs> I started in Genesis and I went all the way to the Revelation and said, I see what's going on here. <laughs> Revelation. So this is uh, at the church in Sardis. Chapter. Yeah. Three. It's chapter. Chapter three. Three, verse five. This is the church in Sardis. <clears throat> okay, and so the church in Sardis. These things, uh, the verse one, and, and and unto the angel of the church in Sardis, write. These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God. Now, I can't wait to see what this looks like in heaven, the seven spirits of God. Yeah. And the seven stars. And I can't wait to see those too. Yeah. And I know I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest, and are dead. Ooh, ouch. Ouch. Okay, so it says be watchful and strengthen those things. Uh, it gives encouragement, uh, rebuke and encouragement in this chapter. And then verse 5. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Amen. Very important that you know that you need to be ready for his coming. And if you're not saved, if you have not been born, you must be born again. If you have not been born again, we're going to get an opportunity here very shortly. That's a, that's a scary verse. That, it is a scary verse because... That's said, a sobering verse that, that I might not... Blot out. So that implies that you can be, right? Yeah, it does. It does imply that you can be, and then also there are other instances in the in the Bible where it says your name can be blotted out of the Book of Life. Ouch. And, and so, but I'm not going to get into that nope. right now. Stand. That, that's a serious doctrine for serious study. And if you're new in the Lord, I recommend reading uh, the Gospel of John for sure. Amen. And praying and letting the Holy Spirit speak to you through that. And uh, Romans. You should definitely read Romans if you're a new believer. I would I definitely encourage you to read that because it's very encouraging, the book of Romans, if you're a new believer. And it'll show you how to live, too, as well. And to, how to witness to other people because we have the Romans road. And I'm going to go into a little bit of that right here because it just goes with it. It goes with this. So, uh, yeah, Romans 10, 9, we know that one. 
Romans 10, 9, and 10. The same. I'm turning there with you guys. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Romans 10, 9, and 10. Romans 10, 13. Romans 10, 9. We, we know these verses. This is this is the Romans path. This is how you how you witness to people that, that don't know him. 323, 623, Romans 3. 10. 310, 323, 623, 3. and Romans 10, 9, and 10. Yep, and boom. And a lot of stuff in Romans 5, 8, too, or yep. Romans 5. But the easy one is the 323 three and the 623, yeah, three, three, and then right on over here. And then Romans 10, 9, and 10. <laughs> yep, and we're good to go. <laughs> as we know it. So, it says, um, we're talking about confession in verse 11 of Philippians chapter 2. Yep. That, it what. But what saith it? I'll read word eight. Yeah, I love that uh, one too. What, is it? what saith it? The word is nigh thee. That means close to thee. Very, very close actually is what that means in Greek. The word is very, very close to thee in Greek. Even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. And I just Amen. want to stop there. Woo, Holy God Ghost. Says, Woo. God says he has given to every man the measure of what? Faith. Faith. Amen. Thank you. Good, right answer, Scott. You get an A plus there. Amen. He's given to every man the measure of faith, so you can't say you don't have any. Jesus never, and please, please, people, never say to somebody that they're praying and they ain't got an answer. You ain't got no faith. Never say, please don't ever say that to somebody. I mean, this is a word from the Lord for somebody. Don't ever say you ain't got no faith. Jesus right. said you have little faith. And it could be translated as what you fail to see. Exactly. Because Jesus yep. is here to open our eyes to faith. Amen. Amen. And the word opens our eyes Woo! to faith, you guys. Preach it, brother. That's why I'm preaching it. Okay, so the word, that is the word of faith which, which we, we preach. preach. That if thou you know, shalt shall confess, confess with thy mouth, mouth the Lord Jesus, Jesus and shalt shall believe in thine heart, heart that God, God has raised, raised him from the, the dead, dead, thou shalt shall be, be saved. saved. Amen. For the mouth for the heart, man believes believe unto righteousness, righteousness, and with, and with the, the mouth, mouth confession, confession is made unto salvation. salvation. So, and then, and of course, Scripture saith, verse 11, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. And then Paul says in Acts 16, 31, Believe on the Lord Jesus to the Philippian jailer, and you shall be saved. Because the Philippian jailer asked him, What do I got to do to be saved? He said, Believe on the Lord Jesus to yep. be saved. Amen. So you got to believe on them, people. That's it. And you have the word here, the testimony of God here. Amen. If you believe on Him, you will be saved. Amen. So that's it. That's I'm going to wrap it up right there. And I'm going to end actually with Matthew 10:32. That's what you said. Yep. The Lord told me to end with that, so I'm going to be obedient. I'm going to end with. I'm turning there. I'm almost there. Matthew what? 10.32. Mom was on that. It is. Yes, Matthew 10.32. Joni remembers. That's a beautiful verse. See, and then look at that timing. I made it right there as you were flipping there. Jesus says, this is the word of the Lord here. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. Hallelujah. I pray that all of you out there confess him today and God's going to come up here and give the altar call. And so the word, let the word of your mouth and the meditation of your heart be acceptable to the Lord today. Amen. I pray for all you guys that God blesses you and prospers you in every way, especially in your holy faith. So Scott, come on up here and uh, you can do the altar call. Hallelujah. Praise God. Love you guys so much. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Good word. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give you glory. Thank you for the word. But right now, Lord Jesus. Hey, Bert, what's going on there? How's that? We got rain going on? Yep. Wow. <laughs> I don't know, we got Stop rain. Stop pouring in the Holy Spirit yeah, water. Pouring in the, Holy in the living water. water. The living water. This train is bound for glory. The Holy Spirit is raining down. Raining down on us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's okay. Don't worry about it. The heavens have a lot of water. We have some rain coming down. We thank you, Lord.
There might be some of you out there right now that don't know Jesus. We bless you right now in the name of the Lord. Thank you for that word, brother. But right now there is a decision that needs to be made. Perhaps you're feeling down or you're going through a hard time right now. And if some of you have, are missing some loved ones right now, it's Mother's Day and there's someone watching right now that just lost their husband. The Lord wants you to know that he loves you, but you need to make a choice. You need to get right with Jesus today. Tomorrow is not promised. Are you certain you're right with Jesus today? Amen. Have you said this prayer? Have you confessed with your mouth the Lord Jesus? And do you truly believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead? Maybe you're in a place of unbelief right now. Maybe you're in a place where you feel like you should give up. There's moms all over the world right now that aren't together with their family. Even heard from a friend right now that the other day got a prayer request that says she wants to take her life. She wants to hang herself. That's some serious business. That's how bad people's pain is that they think that there's no more. There's nothing else to live for. But let me tell you, hell is no place for anybody. But heaven is available today. Amen. As your song says, come to the Lord today. Make a choice for Jesus. Today is the day. Now is the accepted time. With every head bowed and every eye closed, if you're one of those people and you have never made the decision for Christ, or perhaps you're in a backsliding state, maybe you're, you've just fallen away and you're not walking with the Lord, you grew up in church, you went to church, you did all the do's and you did all the don'ts, but you haven't been close to Jesus. Come to Jesus today. Make the choice. Wherever you are, perhaps you're watching live right now, or you're watching later on YouTube, or later on Facebook. It's not too late. The Holy Spirit is working. The, the, the Lord is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. This word that's on this recording right now is just the same as it's being spoken right now. Amen. Or perhaps you're one of our neighbors and you're listening. Cross over by the fence. My neighbor used to peek his head up over the fence and say, hey, can I come swimming? <laughs> well, come swimming with Jesus. Bathe yourself in the Holy Spirit, yeah, yeah, in the yeah. water that restores, that brings yeah. eternal life welling up inside. Yeah. Even Brother Jeff, who was walking with the Lord until he started serving God and, and started preaching the Word, then the life started to come out yeah. and your walk started to get solid, right? Yeah. Maybe the Lord's calling some of you right now to be ministers of the gospel. Yeah. Answer the call. Start today with Jesus. Make that choice just as you are. So with every head bowed and every eye closed, if you need to make that choice, just raise your hand right where you are. Say, Jesus, I choose you. Hallelujah. And pray this simple prayer with us from Romans chapter 10. Just like our brother preached, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, Hallelujah. that's what we're doing right here in this prayer, just confessing Jesus. So together as family and friends, repeat after me. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, forgive me. I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I'm a sinner. And I ask you to forgive me. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. That he rose on the from the grave. he rose from the grave on the third day. And he will receive me today. I turn from my sin. I turn from my sin. And I make Jesus. I make Jesus the Lord of my life. The Lord of my life. And I ask that you fill me up. And I ask that you fill me up. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Right now. Right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! And if you made that choice, get to church. If you can't get there in person right now, great. You can stay with us right here online or tune into any, any good Bible preaching church. Amen. Amen. Get plugged in. If you have any questions at all, give us a call at one 70 jesus That's one 70 jesus Or log on to our website at oneaccordcrusades.com. Amen. Amen. All right, Joni, come on up here and uh, tell us what else we got to do. Well, I looked up the scripture about speaking. Amen. And I want, because I didn't want it to, to go out, because I like I, I like to be sure that I'm accountable for uh, what comes out of my mouth. 
Amen. It's found in Isaiah 55, 11. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Woo! Woo! Hallelujah. Amen. I got that memorized in King, King, uh, New King James Version. I got to re go over it again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I texted it to you guys. Lord, that I, it, shall, it shall accomplish that which I preach. It shall come, will not return to me. And void. that is the benefit of speaking the word. When you Amen. read the word of God, like, boom! Boom. It's <laughs> a lot. Hallelujah. Amen. So we're going to have our little prayer huddle here. Amen. And Pastor Scott's going to introduce what to we, why our, we like do said, our family, prayer so huddle. It's their feet. <laughs> <laughs> we want to be good examples. Amen. You know, Amen. The, 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 the Romans uh, 13. <laughs> I'm holding on to that one. One and two. Amen. Amen. Don't, get all pit, don't get all upset about your government. Yeah. You know, yada, yada. Trying, they're trying to protect those. The, the stay at home order, the, the distance thing. It's for those that can't protect themselves, the ones that are more susceptible, really. It ain't yeah. about most of us. We're not past that point. We're, yeah. You know, we're fairly decent health. Yeah. But it's yeah. for those that aren't. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And if one person gets saved because you listen to what, the, the you know, our president and the team says, That's then it's worth it. One it. person, right? Yeah. One person. Well, you sure know what I'm saying? Because there's a lot of controversy whether it matters or the mask or this or that. Who cares? Right. The other part is just to be obedient. Amen. They say don't do it, don't do it. They ain't telling us to kick Jesus to the curb. Yeah. You know what I mean? Do I agree that church is closed? No. Does it matter? No. To me, we are the church. We are the church. <laughs> <laughs> you, know? you know, the thing about that, too, yeah, is that more is people happening. are... Some people are more obedient to the gov government than they are to God. Ooh. Exactly. And I'd rather listen to the Lord. But, but listening to them is obeying the Lord. Yes, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. As long as they ain't telling you to kick Jesus to the curb. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now yeah. that we got a problem. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 So, but anyway, we got we do a prayer huddle, as we call it, or a prayer circle in public when they're not doing the social distancing. So we want to grab an arm or a shoulder. We'll call it the prayer huddle. But we, we get together in a circle for several reasons. Number one, the circle represents family. And when I got married to my wife, I gave her a ring. And she gave me a ring. We, I got a ring. We put the two together. That's the infinity sign. At least that's yeah. what we recognize that's it as. Cool. It's a continuous circle that doesn't get broken. Yeah. The two coming together. Because one circle is kind of born by yourself. You know what I'm saying? But it still represents the same thing, family. Yeah. Amen. But we also do it in remembrance of those brothers and sisters that can't be here right now that are locked up. Amen. Any jail, institution, prison, whatnot, at around 9 o'clock at night when the before lights out, they'll, someone will call prayer circle. And if they can get together, they will circle up in a prayer circle. Yeah. Right. And they will put their prayers out in the front. And they'll be open and honest. And if there's a brother or sister on a Sunday, usually Sunday nights, like tonight, the prayer circle would include if you'd have court tomorrow on Monday, get in the middle and we'll pray for your court case. Yep. That's also going on. Yeah. So we do this in remembrance of them so that we can look them square in the face. So when they get here, especially some of them that we're praying for, yeah. uh, we, and when we're on the street again, we can say, bro, we've been praying for you. Yeah. That you would be in this circle. No more yeah. vacation. No more vacation. And we can tell them squarely and straight to the face. We did this every Sunday, praying that you would be here that's with us right. now. Right. Amen. Amen. And I think that's going to uh, be a testimony to them. Amen. And just because I come from there, and it's something that I learned, and I thought it was cool too. Amen. So let's do it. Then. And then reminding ourselves too, like, I like to say, we say the, the, the Lord's Prayer or the, or the Our Father, like yeah. you said, the real Lord's Prayer is uh, chapter 17 of John. Yeah. But the Our Father, the, 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 model prayer, the model prayer, we say it the way the King James writ, wrote it, the way it was written with the word in earth and also debt and debtors. Yeah, yeah. But I'm finding out that as we, when we get around family and friends or in an AA meeting or in a different yeah. environment, I don't want to be the weirdo that says that yeah. in, while everyone else is saying the way that it, it's, it's, the other way is mixed with two different scriptures, uh, two different verses. Joni had sent me the other version, which does say, forgive them their trespasses as you, for, you know, but the King James, the one version says that, but it's, if you're in a group of people, go ahead and just say it the way you learned it, you know what I mean? So you're not the guy, oh, right, I'm King James guy, you know, just, just, <laughs> just chill, bro. So, but we do do it here because we want to do what the scripture says. Amen. Whose father? Our, Our father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil, for thy is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Prayers go up, blessings come down. Prayers go up, blessings come down. Prayers go up, blessings come down. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Hey, Bubba, you made it back. All right, guys, it's Pastor Scott. Um, we love you guys. Thank you for joining the service, whether it's live or later. We love you. If you need anything at all, give us a call at 1-855-70-JESUS or log on to our website at oneaccordcrusades.com. God bless, bless you. Please reach out. And if you just made the decision for Christ, whether it's now or later, just uh, email us. Reach out to us. Give us a call. We're here for you to guide you, to teach you. Um, love watching the team together. Yep, we are interesting. And I forgot to mention while I was up there that this is our last weekend together with the team for the summer. Um, we're going to be taking off to Montana. And um, I was supposed to say something about that, but I wasn't preaching, so I totally spaced. But it is in here in my Bible. <laughs> I'll show you. Let your yeas be yeas and your nays be nays. Amen. 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 So, yeah, so this is our last weekend with the team. Um, before they leave, we'll have them pray us out or something at a distance or whatever. But we love you guys. We're going to have a short meeting is, uh, before we get going. So we'll be in Montana next week and probably Sunday or Monday, Saturday, Sunday or Monday, depending on when we get going. All righty. And then we'll quarantine, self-quarantine for two weeks. Get that uh, God's Ten Commandment park open. And then we'll start... Uh, seeing all our friends and family members out there already. So keep us in prayer. We'll be hitting the road Thursday or Friday of next week. God bless you. Happy Mother's Day. We love you. Pastor Scott and the team checking out.